Hello, peoples, and welcome to uh, a video. So, if you're looking for something to cheer you up, I'd recommend going, not watching this video. This video is something that it, it would make me really sad to hear from someone, and basically... Only watch this if you really are okay with being at least kind of sad. I mean, you might enjoy that, so this might be the perfect video for you. But, so I basically, I wrote this all down while I was at work because I couldn't think of anything more. Like any, I, I just couldn't get it off my mind. And basically, if you know, I've been pretty into a girl lately pretty attached and that's why I have been pretty slow on YouTube and Twitch and stuff but that's over now pretty much and I'm gonna tell you the story that of everything that happened and it's a lot that happened and I'm hoping to bring some awareness to something okay so I'm gonna tell you guys about my love story bas basically what this is the story takes place basically the last eight months until now. And, yeah. It was halfway through my first year of college. I've always been a morally good kid. And I didn't do any of the typical college kid stuff or, you know, just bad kid stuff. I just hang, I would just hang with my friends and play video games. And... You know, I was just starting up on YouTube at this time. It's just starting up to, like, really make videos and stuff. I had been on YouTube for, like, I've been on YouTube for five years now, but that was when I really decided I wanted to make YouTube videos. And times are good. Very simple, but good. Girls would ask me, like, <laughs> girls at college are something else, man. They would always ask me to hook up and stuff. If you don't know what that is, don't look it up. <laughs> don't look up the hookup. Um, or go to their dorm and chill, you know, all that. I just wasn't into that. I, w I would much rather just stay in my dorm and play video games and record videos. I'm not into you know, that. <laughs> and that's why I'm still a virgin, because <laughs> I'm not into doing that stuff. At this point in my life, when a came to girls I hadn't had a girlfriend in pretty much two years my senior year I had a hopeless crush on a girl who had pretty much never liked me back it seems I always felt like there was some sort of hope and I just kept going and it just wasn't wasn't good so I didn't really talk to girls much just stuck with my friends and we would hang out every week back to college so halfway through my first year of college I started getting messages from this girl. She lived in Kentucky, I found out right away. <laughs> so at first I was very skeptical, you know. But hey, at least there's a girl trying to talk to me, like actually talk to me and get to know me. <sighs> so I would talk back and we had a lot of good conversations. She was a great person to talk to. Then she gave me her Instagram, and that's where things went crazy. <sighs> this super cool down to earth girl that is also the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. Like, I kid you not, so attractive. She was drop dead gorgeous, and she was spending time talking to me crazy. And so the talking kept happening. Seemed like, seemed like right around the time I was deciding to just let love do its thing and stop waiting for it, just let it happen. I just didn't wanna try and chase after it. I was just gonna let things happen as they were, I was, you know. And then right away, came out of nowhere. Of course, telling all my friends got me a lot of, don't you think she might be catfishing? And how do you know she's not catfishing? Like a bunch of those. Because, you know, they're, they're not the one talking to her. They don't understand. But I knew there was something different about her. If you don't know what catfishing is, it's when someone uses another person's pictures as their own to appear as something different, usually to get attention that they otherwise wouldn't with their own looks. 
that's basically what it is. There's other ways that it's been used and stuff, but that's basically what it is. I was so sure that I wasn't being catfished, and I would even say, if I'm being catfished, then they are doing one heck of a job, because it just didn't seem like it to me. So on her Instagram, the pictures went back for two years. The pictures were posted every couple weeks or sooner, you know, like a regular Instagram person, kind of. There was comments from friends that were in the pictures, like friends looking at the pictures, like followers. Seems pretty darn legit to me. <laughs> I didn't think much of it, and we kept talking. There were things so different about her that I started to really like her. Got to the point where all I wanted to do was talk to her, and there was never a dull conversation. It's crazy. That, like, never happens anymore, but we could talk for hours at a time without skipping a beat. She never asked me for nudes, and I never did the same. And she asked me about it once, saying that I was the only guy to ever not ask for nudes. But that's just the way I am. I don't need to see a person naked to know that I like them and want to be with them. If it's what's inside that matters. Looks are a bonus. And in this case, I was get, I had a really big bonus <laughs> from talking to her. She liked me, that about me, and I liked that she liked that about me. <laughs> this generation is too sex-driven, and people need to know that there are more important things in a relationship. And just in general like actually knowing that you are in love that that is pretty important there were times where I would get too into a video game and she would kind of feel left out times where she felt neglected because I was streaming or something and she felt replaced understandable that's you know that's normal people will get jealous this girl was catfishing me wouldn't you think she would want something from me other than just chatting one time when she was messaging me about how she felt neglected during a stream I asked her to date me it was completely out of nowhere and she didn't know if she could handle long distance but she told me I would be worth it cuz she had never talked to a guy like me who liked her for her and wouldn't mind waiting you know waiting to meet and be able to actually do things like it was worth it just because of how much we connected when we would talk. From there, things just kept going uphill, generally. We went through some bumps, and even broke up once. But I cared about that girl so much, that nothing could stop me from being with her. I talked to her every day, and just stayed there for her until the day, the day we confessed our love. <laughs> she mentioned how she thought saying I love you was overused in this day and age, and how she really felt it. She actually felt it. And little did she know I felt the same way, maybe even more so. I really did. After that, there wasn't, there wasn't very many bumps. It was smooth sailing. We talked about getting married a lot, where we would live, waiting till marriage, because we were both virgins. Being role models as a couple, basically. like, Kind of just seemed like we were just going to be the perfect couple. Like a storybook couple. And just being together. It was at this point where my life couldn't get any more perfect. I I had the girl of my dreams, and with that, I started to plan on my life better. Like, before her, it was that point in my life where love, to me, I was just going to let it happen, like, not going to worry about it, and try to... I don't even know what I was going to do. That's the thing. Like, after her, after she came into my life... I felt like I had a reason to actually work for a good job and and be a good person. Like she completed me. I'm sorry if I start crying at some point. I wanted to be the perfect person for the person most perfect for me. I started thinking about things I felt hopeless in, like school and a job. I was getting a plan for school, which I had never planned before. And I even started to try and eat healthy. And I'm still working on that. <laughs> it's hard. My life was looking great. And it was all for and because of her. She gave my life direction. And I'll always thank her for that. A while later, one night, 
after we hadn't really talked much in that day. She started acting different. I knew something was up, like she just didn't seem the same. She started telling me that she didn't deserve me, and that she wasn't good enough for me, and that I was too good for her. I didn't even know what to say, none of that was true. From what I have seen of her and talked to her, she was literally perfect. There was nothing wrong with her. I mean, there's like flaws that everybody has. Like there's things you can't avoid with being human. Like you're gonna have flaws, but like with flaws, she was perfect. She was so perfect for me. And if anything, I wasn't good enough for her for sure from what I saw. Her life was just great, and I was so happy to be a part of it. She just kept trying to break up with me that night. She kept saying I should find someone better, someone I deserve, and that she didn't deserve me. I felt so awful, wondering what I did if I did anything. But one thing was for sure, I was not letting that girl out of my life. Like, the one thing that actually felt perfect to me, I was not just going to let her go because she didn't think she was good enough. I was way too in love, and she was absolutely the perfect girl for me. So I explained for the rest of the night how much she meant to me, and how much she deserved me, because she really did. Finally, she came to her senses, and everything was great. <laughs> then one night, on my way home from work, I got a call. It was an MTV producer for the show Catfish. At first, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> But I've always wanted to be on TV, so I talked to the guy <laughs> for a while. Turned out Kenzie, who is the girl that I've been talking to, uh, talking about this whole time, I've been talking to Kenzie, had applied to the show. So she was the one who applied. So I started thinking, does she think I'm catfishing her? Well, if she thinks I'm catfishing her, then this is great. <laughs> because that means she is real for sure. I talked to her, and she told me she didn't think I was catfishing. She just thought that this would be a great way to meet each other, you know? Like, they were going to pay for everything, and it was going to be on TV. She, Kat, Kenzie was also telling me about how it would be great for my YouTube channel to give me publicity. Like, she's great. She is just the sweetest. That's what I wrote. But something just didn't feel right. Why would the show want a couple that has no secret? Nothing to hide. After a while... Kenzie started to have second thoughts about the show. She would tell me, I don't want to do it because when you go on TV, you'll have so many chances to meet so many girls that are better than me. Why would she think that? <laughs> There's no way any girl could see me as an option if they see how in love with her I am and how happy I would be to meet her. Like, if, if anyone saw that on TV, like, instantly you would just wouldn't see me as an option because that's really how I felt. Then after a little longer, she told me something kind of big. She told me the real reason she didn't want to do the show. She cheated on me. That was the secret that the show was looking to break to me on television. Apparently, Kenzie was still talking to her ex up till after a month of us officially dating. So that's like three months of us, three months of us talking. We, have been, we had talked for two months, started dating, and for that whole, that three months, one month of us dating, she was still, like, with her ex. I didn't take it bad at all, honestly. I understood. It's the first time either of us had done long distance. How are we supposed to know that we would end up so perfect for each other? Like, it could have just been a blow-off thing, you know? That's how I looked at it. She said that, she hasn't talked to him since, and honestly, it was okay with me. No biggie. But I still wanted to do the show. That was something I really wanted to do. She still didn't. She would say, I don't want the world to know that I hurt the best guy in the world. She, she thought so high of me, and I felt the same with her. She just didn't know how strong I felt with her, I guess. I've been spending all my time since then to try and show her. After we decided we weren't going to do the show, for sure. My mom told me that she wanted to drive me down to meet her. My mom, <laughs> she cares about me so much. And she really wanted me to be 100% sure. This whole time, I'm, 
I had been, I always would say 98% sure that this Kenzie is the real thing. Nothing is wrong about her. And the 2% is literally because we, I just wasn't actually sure. And my mom wanted me to be sure because she didn't want me to get any deeper in love because she knew I was. I told her and she seemed so happy that my mom would want to drive me down. It was the perfect solution. We, could, we would meet and Kenzie wouldn't have to confess to anything. So we planned on a weekend and all that was left to do was wait. Right about now in this story, like me telling it right now, the story is in this, now right now in this story is a couple weekends ago. I think it was last weekend, maybe just before it. We were going to meet this weekend, so this weekend, it's currently, right now it's 3 a.m. on one Thursday morning, basically, so we were going to meet this weekend. But I really wanted to see her before, you know, be sure. So I told her I really wanted to Skype her. We never did it in the past. And I really just wanted to be 100% sure she was who she said she was before I went and drove eight hours to see her. There was always speculation in my head, but I always trusted and believed that there were no secrets anymore. I was wrong. A couple minutes before we Skyped, Monday, she said she needed to tell me something and asked if I was ready. I instantly knew what was going to happen, but I always knew there was a chance, so I felt I was ready. She told me that we had video chatted before on Omegle, but I didn't recognize her because she had been using a bunch of fake accounts that were using someone else's pictures. Yep, the worst thing that could ever happen in my life happened. One minute my life is perfect and the next it's all gone. The thing I like the most about my life is gone. The one I wake up and text till I fall asleep doesn't exist. The girl of my dreams that I loved so much and that loved me back was a joke. It was a nightmare. I had so many questions but it was just so hard to think. Think about all the things that made me sure this couldn't be the case and how they were wrong. I've never felt worse in my life. She told me who she really was and how it happened, but I just couldn't deal with it. I could barely move or breathe just from shock. All the thoughts and dreams and ambitions we had together were with some person I didn't know. I fell in love with the picture Kenzie with someone else's words. And she has no idea who I am or that I exist, the real Kenzie. My perfect life with no worries just became a living nightmare. It was the first time I ever went and talked to my mom right away. That's how you know it was serious. <laughs> After a while that day, I asked who the real Kenzie was. I just had to see what the girl that I see in all my thoughts was. She told me, saying it was the least she could do, but she didn't want me to tell her about what happened. But I had to. I just had to. So I told the real Kenzie a brief history of what happened to me, and that her pictures were being used to catfish me. She told me that the same thing had happened before, and it was the same accounts. But she never got any personal, personal information about the person doing it. But I did. Because no matter who that person doing this was, they fell in love with me, and I knew that. I told Kenzie it all. Everything I knew, and she seemed pretty mad, but also thanked me, because she finally had enough information to stop it from happening. I was happy about that. I finally had something to be kind of happy about, because no one deserves to go through what I went through. The fake Kenzie then found out. She told me that Kenzie was yelling at her over messaging and threatening to take legal action. But I just wanted what's right to happen. I'm not going to give away the name of the girl who did it. But she is a girl, and the only thing she lied about was the pictures. And I'm sure about that. She told me why it happened and still tells me how sorry she is. 
She said someone she kind of knew had the accounts and were using them to get attention from guys. He was gay and he was ashamed of it. So he would use that account to get attention from guys because he didn't see another way to do it, I guess. And after a while, he didn't want to keep doing it. So he gave fake Kenzie all the passwords and told her to just keep them away from him. She did that as a friend, and that's very honorable. But then she found me. She didn't even think she would need it, and she fell for temptation. She's actually a pretty attractive girl, in my opinion, and <laughs> you would never suspect her of doing something like this, especially after talking to her. And she never thought she would too, she would tell me. She really is a nice girl, and the girl I fell in love with, so... And I wish I could just look past what happened, but I can't. That's eight months of my life that are now a jumbled mess of memories of what ifs now. Anytime I think of something she told me, I see the face of Kenzie, and I don't even know her. I wish I did, so it would be easier to, for me to remind myself, but oh well. At this point, I'm still talking to fake Kenzie. I just want to set my mind straight. She really is a caring girl, and I'm far too nice to just walk out on her. If she cares about me as much as she says, then this must have been just as hard for her. So, And she had to live with it the whole time, knowing that she was lying to me. So there's that. <laughs> Glad I could get that off my chest. But I have one request. If, if you're watching this, if you made it this far, thank you. For letting me pour my heart into you. So I wrote this little request. If you have the chance to catfish, don't. You will never get anything out of it. And if, you, and if you're just trying to get nudes or attention and stuff like that, all you're going to get is emptiness and sadness. It'll never actually mean something. All it can do is hurt someone. And no one deserves to go through what I went through. I'm thinking about putting some pictures of the... I'm going to put the pictures that were used to uh, catfish me on the screen. I'll put their Twitter in the description. If you start getting talked to by a girl and she looks like this, just be sure, okay? If you feel like you're getting catfished and you're dating online just make sure you're sure just video chat the person skype them make it make it important to do that because i never did i always thought there was no worries but you learn from your mistakes so that's that okay I was just having such a hard time moving on. But it's going to be good. It's going to be okay. This also gives me a chance to not have to explain all of this to so many people. I hope that if you're watching this as a family member, it, I'm okay. Or as a friend, I'm okay. I just... I don't... <laughs> I'll be fine. Yeah, thank you for listening. And goodbye.